All right, guys, CDR Handicap in here. It's Cameron, and I am back with one that I've been looking forward to for two weeks now. I was so pumped whenever this guy <coughs> decided to come on, and we got him here today, Brian Hernandez Jr. Brian, how are you doing today? Hey, Cameron, I'm good. And yourself? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I am I am so through the roof with this. Um, first thing I want to ask you, because I ask everybody this question, how old were you whenever you first got into racing? Um, I first started galloping horses and that on a farm in Louisiana when I was about 12, 12, 13 years old. I'd, I'd gallop, uh, gallop on the weekends and in the summertime when I wasn't in school. And then, you know, growing up down there, my dad was a jockey. So I, it was always something that we, we always grew up around the track. So when I, we're not, like I said, when I was about 12 or 13, I, and then I started getting on horses at the form and just been doing it ever since. So when you finally got to this point now where, and I mean, I don't think a lot of people realize because your name, you've been around for a long time, but I don't think people realize you're still a young guy. You're only what, 34? Yeah, I'm 34. Yeah, I've been around. I've been doing it since I was 18. I, right out of high school, I started riding and, you know, we've kind of, we won the Eclipse Award that year, so we've been around for a while, but it's uh, it's been very fruitful. So one of the things that I always like, the first thing that comes to mind anytime I think of you, i got to go back to the Breeders' Cup 2012. Um, now, you're on Fort Larned, and for me, that was an awesome day because I had just turned 18 that April. So this was like my first year I could really handicap and, and do a real Breeders' Cup and I had, I think I saved like 500 bucks. And I'm like, look, I'm going to become a millionaire. It's Breeders' Cup weekend. I'm going to be a millionaire. That's it. I'll never have to work. Forget college. So I show up and I had the worst weekend ever. And then I look and I say, you know what? This horse got speed. I like him. He has a chance at Santa Anita. Speed carries. I'm going to take a shot with him. And you absolutely just kind of in a way really took command on the front end and I still remember that stretch drive so perfectly because that horse never, they, it, to, to the way I saw it, they could have went around like two more times and you were never giving up the lead. You, that horse was so like perfect for that race, that distance, everything went right. Walk me through that. How exactly did that race go? Uh, now, as you look back on it, what, eight years later? Yeah, that was just a, that was just a perfect storm really. Cause we went in, we went into that day with a lot of confidence and forlorn it and, Actually, going in that day, we didn't. We thought we were the best horse, and and he just went out there and he proved it. You know, he, it was it was a great day because it was actually my birthday, and uh, for him to go out there and win the the richest race in America, it was it was very very special. And that day, it was just everything was meant to be. I'm guessing because it, it was just from word go, he broke just like we needed him to. He put himself in position like we wanted him to, and like you said, when he turned for home and he switched leads right away we could have went around another time and he just was not going to let anybody buy him. He, he was on his game that day and he knew, he knew it was time to step it up and he did. Well, and what I think is funny is because I tell this story to everybody, because this was like my break into uh, really my real big break into handicapping. This is what, this is what made me fall in love with it. And when you look at that race card and you look at some of the names that, that you'd be, yes, Fort Larned, unless you really, really follow racing, it might not be a name that you see out there every day to this point, but you were, you know, you look at some of the horses, Mucha Macha, man, everyone remembers that horse flat out. Uh, you had game on dude who was, I mean, heavily, heavily bet. I remember everybody pretty much that day. Cause I, there's a little racetrack, a harness track around here where I grew up called the Meadows. It's up in Washington, Pennsylvania. And everyone around, was saying, oh, game on, dude. He can't lose. Can't lose. Can't lose. I said, well, wait a second. Yeah, he can. And oh, Tonner and Serve was in that race, too. And everyone yeah. knows Tonner and Serve now. I mean, he's as far as a uh, sire, he's been putting out some good uh, some good quality. So it's it's really strange. When you look back on it, um, you know, do you still kind of, I guess, do you still kind of like have to think like, man, when you, especially when you see the sires, what they're producing, some of the horses that came out of that race, and you say, man, I can't believe, like, I rode a horse that that totally, in a way, you kind of destroyed the field because you only had Mucha Macho, man, really following you. Everyone else was, I think, like seven lengths behind you. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a special deal just because we had already won a grade one with him being, he was our he was my first grade one winner when we won the Whitney up at Saratoga. 
And then for him to go on and win the classic like he did, I mean, that's the best of the best to go in there and win the biggest race of the day on Breeders' Cup weekend. It, it was very, very special. And going into that race, especially after watching uh, the dirt mile that day, we knew that we needed to make sure our horse broke good and put him put him up close because the way the track was playing there at Santa Anita for that weekend, it was just, like you said, to go out there and beat those kind of horses, it was it was Fort Lorna's day that day, and he, he knew it, and he, uh, he went out there and proved it. So how, you know, being, I've never really got the chance to talk to anybody who's won a race that big. How do you celebrate something like that? Like, does it, does it sink in right away or does it take some time and be like, man, after a couple of days, you're like, wow, I, you know, I did that. That's crazy. Yeah. It, it took a few days because, uh, right after the race, we went to the little restaurant right across the street and we, we had a quick dinner, my wife, and then her parents were there and my parents were there. And we, we just had a quick dinner with them, and then we hurried up. And r my wife and I raced off to LAX because we had to catch the uh, we had to catch the red eye so I can be back to riding on Sunday here at Churchill. So it was a little bit of a celebration, but it was it was quick. And then it took a few days before it actually set in. I think it set in like four days later. We had a um, they they paraded all the Breeders' Cup winners from that weekend that were based at Churchill. They brought them all into the paddock at Churchill there to show the fans. And there was, I think there was five of us, five different connections all standing there in the paddock. And then that's kind of when it really set in because they, they announced over the last week you're here at Churchill and here's your Breeders' Cup winning classic champion, Fort Larned. And that's kind of when it, when it all set in. That's awesome, man. Like I couldn't even imagine. I, I don't know what the equivalent would be, I guess if I ever, as a, as a pro handicapper, if I ever win the Breeders' Cup betting challenge, I guess that would be kind of an equivalent. But the only way, I mean, here's the thing. You guys are are balancing on the stirrups going 40 miles an hour, and you're really doing incredible things. The only thing that's going to take me out is if I slip on, on a banana peel on the way to the window. I mean, other than that, I'm good. I have an easy <laughs> I have an easy go of it. Slip on but, a uh, ticket on the way over. Yeah. <laughs> um, now – you had success with Fort Larned. However, I'm really thinking I'm a big fan of this horse that you're on now. Uh, as we're looking into this, really a strange derby since we're going to be, you know, first week of September. But you're on Art Collector. I saw you guys have confirmed you're going to be at the Ellis Park Derby. Um, what What's your thoughts on that horse? What's uh, What's the story with him? He's a He's a really good horse. You know, I he, uh, I rode him last year as a two year old a couple times. And then we thought he was coming down to New Orleans for the winter, and he just he, he never made it. He kind of he just got a little break and a little rest. And they brought him back. I think it was like the first part of March, and he's just he's developed into a really really good horse. I mean, for his his first allowance race back at Churchill, he stepped up and won, and he, he won again going long. And then over in the Bluegrass a couple of weeks ago, he just he stepped he really stepped up because that filly uh, Swiss Skydiver, she's a nice filly, and and he was able to kind of go head to head with her turn for home. And he just, he ran away from her late. And I mean, he's, you got to respect him. He's one of the top three year olds in the country right now. And we're just, we're excited to be on the ride we're on and, and we're having fun with it. Now I wanted to make sure I, I remember this correctly, but with Swiss skydiver, did you get a chance to, to ride her once? I rode her, I rode her in the, uh, in a race down at the fairgrounds, her first race going two turns. And then her next race, she went over to Gulfstream and won the Gulfstream Park Oaks. And then I actually got to ride her back again in the fantasy, and I won the fantasy on her over at Oakland. So when you were coming down the stretch, because um, I remember watching that bluegrass, when you're coming down the stretch, and I mean, I know you, you have to be aware of who's kind of bearing down on you there. I, I mean, you you see that horse, do you, do you at that point, are you like, okay, I you know, I've ridden her, I know, like, does that help at all, you, since you kind of know her tendencies a little? Yeah, it helped because it, it set it up to where even going down the backside and stuff like that, I knew, knew that I needed to stay close to her and use her as a target. That I I couldn't let her I couldn't let her get away from me because if I let her get away from me at any point, I'm probably not going to run her down because, like you said, she's a really good filly and and you can't you can't take anything away from horses like that because they're not going to come back to you most of the time. You got to kind of go after them and and try to beat beat them at their own game. And and being that I was on the best horse, I knew that art collector can do that and that's what he did he just went after her and when i called on him again he, he just ran on right past her 
so now how does it feel for you being on especially when you're when you're in a situation where i mean in a sense yes this uh the Ellis park derby um there are going to be competitive horses there but in a sense you would think this is almost like a uh like a, a high class kind of warm-up race for this horse right yeah but you can never take anything for granted because uh it's horse racing you know anytime you go in there thinking oh you you got this one in the bag things happen i mean just for granted talk going back to our fort larned days the uh fort larned won the breeders cup and then his ne very next race was a small stake over at Gulfstream in the first part of march and we went over there thinking that all oh, he can't lose well he stumbles out the gates of her step and i fall off and then the rest is history you know you, so same thing with this ellis park race we just got to go into it with the best the best options for our horse and uh give him the best clean trip we can and, and just give him a good race and get ready for derby so brian we do have one um we have a viewer question here i'm gonna pop it up on the screen uh frank chester wants to know is your race strategy based on the jockey or horse or combination of both it's it's a combination of both but you go back and you watch you got to watch all the replays of the horses that you ride, you're racing and their horses you're riding. And then riding with a lot of the guys I ride with throughout the country, you kind of, you learn a couple of tendencies about them. You know, certain guys, you know, they'll, they're going to send and they're going to want to be closer. Whereas some guys will be a little more patient and you just learn that from riding over the years with them that you kind of, and just like, they know, they know what I'll do most of the time because most of the time jockeys have the same tendencies over and over again. You, you, they'll change it up, up every once in a while while but for the into some position okay okay see that's a good that's a good insight to have that's a good question frank i like that one um now with uh with art collector you know you guys are going to be at the ellis park derby when when that runs i mean do you have an idea on who else is heading that direction any other horses that that are going um, there we have a few problems Hey, Brian, I don't know if you could hear me, but we're having a little bit of a, it's a little bit choppy on your end. Let me see if we can get Brian back. Brian, you got me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you now. I think I lowered the resolution, so we should be a little bit better now. Um, sometimes that okay. happens with this. Yeah, it happens every once in a while with this, but we're good. We power through it like champions. That was a grade one effort on on battling through the technical issues. That's what that was. But uh, get, so go on. With, so we kind of missed it. But what were you saying about some of the horses that you know were heading that direction? I believe those two are, but I'm not quite certain uh, on all of them. Okay. All right. So as we're kind of getting close to. Uh, to kind of the the finish of all this one thing i want to know you know i know you've ridden in the derby a couple times or a few times yeah when you, when you got a horse like this heading into it the excitement level for you and i know you said it's horse racing anything can happen but i mean the excitement level and the confidence level especially when you know like you said we talked before you said this is a smart horse he's very you know when you have that you know everything can come together are you just super pumped and like kind of counting the days till that weekend yeah i mean of course you're, you're going into it excited especially knowing that you got a big chance but you you still got to go into it and checking on your horse making sure everything's good with him and just you got to go into the race trusting him and and letting him do his job and i think based off of what i've seen you know, every like authentic, everyone saw Mike Smith after the Haskell saying how green authentic ran. 
And a lot of these three-year-olds do have a tendency to run green. But I mean, when you're in a situation like you are, you're, you're lucky enough to have a horse that's very professional at the age he is. And I'm sure like, see, I'm, I'm 300 pounds. So I, I don't have to worry about ever getting on top and, uh, and trying to ride one to victory anytime soon. But I could imagine if I was 200 pounds lighter and I'm in a situation where, you know, like you're in it, it feels good. I mean, you're on a horse that, you know, if you need him to do certain things, you can get him to do. It. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's the nice thing about him is he kind of, he puts himself in a good position and, and he listens to us, you know, it's not, he's not the type of horse that needs to be on the lead or needs to be 10 lengths back to try to make a run and get in trouble. He's the type of horse where he can kind of adapt to his surroundings and go from there so one of the final things uh that i want to ask because i i like asking jockeys this whenever they come on what do you look for in a horse whenever you're either let's say you, you're in talks with being able to get the mount on one or if there's you know when you have one on the track warming up what are you looking for that tells you this horse is ready to go today you just you're just looking for the right energy levels and just all the right cues for the horse. You know, after after years of doing it, you kind of learn certain you know, a lot of horses, and as you know, which ones what their daily habits will be, and you just kind of look the Let me see if Brian, Brian, you still got me. You got a little choppy there. Yeah. Sorry. All right. The internet's no, bad out here. No, you're good. Listen, I just, I had to deal with the same thing. Like literally I was going through the same thing not long ago. So <laughs> I know it's, it's like brutal whenever it doesn't want to work. Um, so before we wrap up, there's one final question from Frank. Uh, he wants to know how much is a lack of fans affecting you as a jockey? It's uh, it's something that we've had to get used to, you know, like riding these big races, especially that you want to see the crowds come out and enjoy them. And, and without the crowds there, it's just it takes a little bit of the fun out of it. Well, uh, yeah, I could definitely I can see that because, I mean, you guys are just like any other athlete. You guys like the fans there to pump you up a little bit. It adds to the excitement. So I can imagine it's uh, it's an adjustment, but we're all kind of we're all getting through it. It'll it'll get get better uh you know as time goes on but uh brian i want to thank you so so much for coming on today it was Thanks awesome having, having you um guys cdr handicapping remember uh follow me www.patreon.com slash cdr handicapping uh follow me on twitter cdr underscore cam uh and listen we're gonna do this every day uh monday to friday uh, we have new interviews lined up all the time. So it was awesome having uh, having Brian on. I'm very glad he was able to join me today. And uh, we'll keep powering through, guys. Good luck on all your wagers. And happy handicapping to all of you.